Hello students, this is Miss Dalton and this video is over solving absolute value inequalities. When we're solving absolute value inequalities, I want you to remember that um, the absolute value of x is the distance between x and 0. Since two values have a distance of 8, in the example that we look at right here, if the absolute value of x is less than 8, well, there are two numbers that have a distance from 0 um, as being 8. That is negative 8 and positive 8. And so everything between those numbers would be a solution because, again, at negative 8 and positive 8, those the absolute value of both of those equal 8 and then if we want it to be less than 8 then it's going to be everything on the inside that's going to become clearer in just a few minutes when we work through some examples but again you need to understand that there are two values that can be inside the absolute value bars um, to get that positive value of 8 alright so let's look at our first example. Um, if you remember when we solved absolute value equations, um, we had some steps. And so the first step is you need to isolate that absolute value, um, which in this case, and, and we're going to follow the same steps with inequalities. Uh, if we isolate our absolute value, that has already been done for us. Um, and so the next point is you want to set it equal to the positive and the negative which we're still going to do that. We're still going to take the inside x minus 4 and we're going to um, set it to positive 3 and we're going to take that x minus 4 and use negative 3. Okay, but here's the thing. When you change it to an opposite sign when it's an inequality, um, when it stays 3, you're still going to use that less than. But when you flip it to the opposite, which is negative 3, then you also need to flip the inequality the other direction. And so we're going to go ahead and solve it now. So now we're going to add 4 to both sides, here and here. And so that's going to give me x is less than 7. Over here, when I add 4 to both sides then what we get is x is greater than 1. Now, if I was to graph that on the number line, let's say here's my 0, and here's 1, and then down here is 7. Well, x is less than 7. We'll have an open circle, and it'll be less than, so it'd be this way, okay? Well, x greater than 1 would be an open circle and then we're going to shade it greater than which is this way. When those two arrows come together it's going to be an AND statement or a between statement. Um, x is all the numbers that are between 1 and 7. So you can either put an AND here or you could rewrite this as a between statement, which you should be familiar with, with working with domain and range. We always want to put the lowest number first, and then we'd have the x in between, and then the highest number at the end. So you can actually write it this way, or you can write it this way, either way. All right, so let's look at this next example. So our first step is we need to isolate the absolute value, so we need to go ahead and do that here. We're going to add 3 to both sides. That's going to give us the absolute value of 2x plus 1 greater than or equal to 9. And now we're going to set it to the positive and the negative. So we're going to split this up now. And we're going to do 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 9. And then when we flip it to a negative 9, we want to make sure 
that we do 2x plus 1 but now since we're flipping it then it's going to be a less than or equal to negative 9. So you just have to remember to flip that inequality when you make it a negative number. Okay, so continue to solve. On the left side, we've, we're going to subtract 1. And so then we'll have 2x is greater than or equal to 8. And then divide by 2, x is greater than or equal to 4. Over here, when we subtract 1, we're going to get 2x less than or equal to negative 10. And when we divide by 2, we get x is less than or equal to negative 5. Okay, to determine whether or not you have an and or an or statement, I do think it helps to go ahead and draw a number line, a sketch of a number line. We're going to have 4 over here, and we're going to have negative 5 over here on the number line, right? If 0 is right here. At 4, it's everything greater than or equal to. So equal to will be a solid point, and greater than would be this way. Um, and then we also have x is less than or equal to negative 5. So equal to would give me a solid point. Less than would shoot me to the left. Well, since they're moving in opposite directions, then now this is not a between statement. This is just an or statement x can either be greater than or equal to 4, or x can be less than or equal to negative 5. And so you'll just leave it like this. The only time you can combine them and make it a between statement is if this shaded piece would be shaded in here, in the middle here. Okay? And it's not. Okay, these next two examples present an interesting... Um, situation. Uh, the first one we have the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than negative 4. So I want you to think about that for a second. Anytime you have the absolute value of something, you're going to get a positive number. So we're going to have a positive number on this left side and it's saying when is that going to be less than a negative 4? Well, if you think about the number line, are positive numbers ever going to be less than a negative number? And the answer to that is no, so this one would be a no solution. On the other hand, in this example on the right, the absolute value of x, x minus 8 uh, greater than a negative 5. So now they're asking when is it going to be greater than negative 5? Well, again, anything in the, when we take the absolute value of anything, it is going to give us the positive value. So when would a positive value be greater than a negative 5? Well, all positives are greater than negative 5. So this one is going to be all real numbers. So that is the solution here. So be careful of these and something that will kind of set you off as, as being kind of a red flag that this might happen is when the, the original problem has a negative on that right side. Now the other way that you can solve um, absolute value inequalities is graphically. So I want you to take this example. We have the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2 is greater than 3, and so they want us to solve it. So I want you to think of this part on the left-hand side. Think of it with as a transformed absolute value function. So on this left-hand side, if I was to graph just the left-hand side, it would have a vertex of 1, 2, Okay, so I'm going to try and graph that on this graph. So that would be about right there. Okay, and then it has, um, it's going to open up and it has, each side has a slope of 1. So the graph is going to look like this.
And then now I also want you to graph the right side. So on the right side, I want you to look at this as just uh, y equals 3. So when I graph that um, line at y equals 3, it's going to be a horizontal line when y is 3, so it's going to look something like this. And so what it's asking you is it's saying, when is that absolute, absolute value equation greater than the horizontal line at 3? So that's going to be everything above that yellow line. So it's going to be here and here. And so since those pieces are separate, um, it is going to be an OR statement. And so it's all of the X values that are less than 0, right? Because that's where this crosses, is right here where x is 0. Or it's all the x values that are greater than here, which is at 2. Now, we're not going to put a line under it like this. I would not use a line under this because this original inequality does not have a line under it. So if it has a line under it, then you will use a line. But since this one doesn't, I'm going to erase that line. Now, let's look at this other example. So now we're saying, when is the absolute value x plus 2 minus 3, when is it less than 1? So again, we're going to take the left side of our graph, and we're going to graph that. So this has a vertex of negative 2, negative 3, which would be here. Okay, it has a slope of 1 on each side, or I, say, I should say 1 on the right side and negative 1 on the, on the left side. So we're going to extend it. This. And then on the right side, we're going to graph y equals 1. And so that's going to be the horizontal line where y is equal to 1. Okay. And then this is asking me, when is that absolute value less than 1? So if I go below the yellow line, that's going to be everything here. And so you can see that because these are connected now, and this is what I'm wanting to look at, then this is going to be a between statement. We're going to have x in the middle. It's going to be surrounded by less than symbols. We're going to put the lowest value, which is at this intersection point. And so that's when x is negative 6. And then the highest value is when x is 2, it looks like. And so that's here. Again, we want to look at this, um, we want to look at this inequality, and since there is no line under that inequality, then we're going to keep the line off of our answer, and this will be our solution. So again, if your piece is connected like this, then you would have a, a between statement. If it's like the previous example where the pieces are separate, then you'll have an or statement. Okay, we will have lots of practice with this tomorrow. This is a hard concept to get, so make sure that you've got your notes written down. Write down any questions that you have so that I can answer them in class.